Hello everybody out there, this is Joe Estorino, CCIE number 24347, and today we're going to continue our series on PPP authentication by looking at how to configure PPP CHAP authentication. Now if you remember from your studies or if you watched my last video on PAP, you'll know that uh, basically the difference between PAP and CHAP is with CHAP, your usernames and passwords are not sent in plain text. So with CHAP, we're going to add an extra layer of security by using a, a bit of encryption, a bit more security here be, between the links. With CHAP, uh, the basic thing to remember is that the password itself is never sent over the wire. Uh, what is sent over the wire is a MD5 hash of the password, and thus it is a little bit more secure. So let's jump right into the configuration here. We're going to start out with a one-way authentication by having router 7 authenticate router 8 using CHAP. And once we get through that, we'll go ahead and configure it the other way around so that router 8 also authenticates router 7. So let's jump over to our rack, start out on router 7. Now again, uh, just like with PAP, the first thing we need to do is configure a username and password for router 8 to go ahead and use. So we're going to say username router 8 password Cisco. And then we're going to go into our interface serial 00, zero and I'm going to say PPP authentication chap. Now over on the router 8 side by the way on router 7 when I say PPP authentication chap that just tells router 7 to go ahead and initiate the authentication mechanism over to router 8. So router 7 at that point is authenticating router 8 and router 8 will have to answer that authentication request. So let's go over to router 8 and we're simply going to go into the serial interface and I'm going to say PPP chap. Let's take a look at our options here. I'm going to say PPP chip password Cisco. Now notice when we did PAP, I had to go ahead and say PPP chip or rather PPP PAP sent username R8 password Cisco. Here I'm not specifying a username, so how is R8 going to know what username to send for the authentication? Well, the answer is actually very simple. Um, with chip, it's going to go ahead and default to the host name of the router. So in this case, our host name is R8. So by default, it's going to send R8 as the username and the password here, whatever we configured. In this case, it's Cisco. Now, what if on the other end, on router 7, what if we didn't have username R8? What if we had username Cisco, password Cisco? Well, then on router 8, I could go ahead and say PPP chap hostname Cisco and then enter the PPP chap password Cisco command. But by default it's the hostname so we can go ahead and leave that alone. So on router 7 we've configured our username. We've configured it to initiate the authentication. On router 8 it uses the hostname by default and we've set the password so we should be good to go. We do have PPP authentication debugging on, on both sides. So let's fire this link up. No shutdown. And no shutdown. Start on router 7 here. So the link, we can see the end result. Whenever your line protocol comes up, that means the authentication uh, has passed. Let's, let's dig through this a little bit. So over on router 7, we see that we had an outbound challenge. So we're going to send out the CHAP challenge over to router 8. We get the response from router 8 here. And you can see it going through the, the process here, whereby it actually passes the authentication. Now you can look up in Cisco documentation exactly what uh, every one of these messages mean but basically when you have an O that's an outbound message when you have an I that's an inbound message and you can see it going through the steps there 
over on router 8 it's going to be similar uh, you see here the incoming challenge from router 7 and it says here like I said the default using the host name and using the password we set on the interface here's our response our outgoing response on router 8 from router 8 or from R8 and then router 7 here is telling us we're good we've authenticated bring the protocol up let's just make sure we can ping the other side perfect so that would be a case of what we call one-way authentication go back to the picture here in that case remember we said PPP authentication chap only on the router 7 side so router 7 is authenticating router 8 router 8 is not authenticating router 7 let's make it work the other way so let's pull up router 8 we're gonna shut down this link real quick on both sides so if we want router 8 to authenticate router 7 at the same time we're gonna say PPP authentication chap and we're gonna need a username and password on this end so we're gonna say let's do something to, uh, something a little bit different that's not the host name we'll say username um, Cisco123 password I could type today password Cisco now over on the router 7 side we're back on the interface we're gonna say PPP chap hostname Cisco 123 PPP chap password Cisco now let's go ahead and bring the interfaces back up And you'll notice here that the line protocol did come up. We have ping reachability across the link. And if you go through these debugs, let's go back up to the first one. You should notice that it's a little bit different. Over here, second time we did it, we have... an outbound challenge from Cisco 123 inbound challenge from R8 whereas up here when we only had the one-way authentication we only had the challenge and response coming in one way here so we only had one outbound challenge so really if we look at this closely the first time we did it right here on router 7 when router 7 was authenticating router 8 only here's our outbound challenge and right right away we get a, an incoming response whereas the second time when we're doing bi-directional authentication we have an outbound challenge so that's router 7 telling router 8 I need you to authenticate right after that we have an incoming challenge so that's router 8 telling us hey router 7 I need you to authenticate and then it goes through the steps here so here's our outbound response that's us authenticating back to router 8 and this is router 8 answering our challenge so as you can see it's a little bit different so there's uh, PPP chap authentication and there is an example of unidirectional and bidirectional PPP authentication hopefully that's been helpful for you guys uh, until next time keep studying hard and I'll talk to you all soon